Welcome to episode 228. Today I have a very useful mini episode for you. I'm going to share with you how to get out of that reading slump. I'm going to share my tips and what works for me because I've heard from several of you that you're in a dry spell or you're not loving what you're reading right now. This is a great time to learn how to get out of that slump and into your next good read. Stay tuned. I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're listening. Here on Book Chat, we get bookish with roundtable book discussions, book recommendation lists, interviews, and more. Be sure to check out shelfaddiction.com for even more content. If you'd like to comment on something you've heard during today's episode, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shelf Addiction or call in and leave an internet voice message via SpeakPipe. The links for everything related to today's episode are below in the show notes. So before we get going, I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping here. I want you guys to know that you definitely don't want to miss my Instagram feed. I have some really cool things coming there. So if you are a fan and user of Instagram, follow me there. This upcoming weekend, I am actually hosting a themed book club. Yes, it's the first time in the many, many, many years that I've been doing book club that I am going to host a themed meeting. We recently read The Bells by Dion Clayton. And if you've read The Bells, then you know everything is whimsical and almost Wonderland-like. She uses a lot of food references and a lot of imagery on how beautiful the food is, how delicious it is, what the spreads look like, the colors, the beautiful balloon post, and all kinds of whimsical little things. And my plan is to have a book club theme with that. So I'm going to have an awesome spread, beautiful decor, and everyone's going to have a great time. I guess the secondary theme would be rosé all day because all we are drinking are rosés during this meeting. I have several rosé wines selected to go with this amazing spread and I will be sharing all of that on Instagram. So if you are curious to see what my themed book club meeting looks like, be sure to follow me on Instagram. All right, guys, so let's jump into things. How do you get over the reading slump? I have five guaranteed ways to knock you out of that reading slump. All five of these are equally as good and they will all do the trick. But let's start with number five. And I say number five is join a book club. Or if you're in a book club, make sure you attend the very next meeting. No skips. This will have you reading things out of your genre comfort zone. And you'll be committed to finishing the book because you'll need to talk about it with people at the meeting. And I mean, yes, some book clubs are more about the wine than the books, but my book club and many others are about the books. So while you're there chit-chatting and having a great time, you will talk about the book and you don't want to be the one person in a group of 10 or 12 that haven't read the book. So that's going to motivate you to just kick it into gear and get the book done. And sometimes all it takes is one book and then you're back in the groove. All right, everyone, I know sometimes it's like no matter what book you pick up, it's just not good enough. You'll read one book, you're like, eh, that wasn't that good. You you know, you search and you find a few more that you're interested in. You might start reading them and you're like, I don't care for that either. And just nothing is sounding good. Nothing is clicking with you. Now is the time for number four. And that is get a recommendation from a person with similar reading styles as your own. And don't even question it. Just roll with it. If they say, hey, you will love this book, then you give it a try. Because sometimes you might find something unexpected that will give you that little nudge and get you right back in the groove. You could find a new favorite author or a new favorite genre, but definitely take a recommendation because that will give you some fresh ideas that you wouldn't have gotten probably on your own. So if neither of the first two ideas are appealing to you, definitely try out this idea. Number three is to revisit a old favorite book. Now I'm not talking about pull out a book from high school or middle school. I'm talking about pull out a book that you just loved in the last few years. You know, something that maybe a series or, you know, or standalone title that you just really loved so much that you told everyone under the sun they had to read it. Pick that book up and read it. 
because that will definitely get you excited again because you know you loved the material and it will get you excited to reread. And, you know, honestly, with so many books nowadays, it's hard for me to reread, but I love it when I do. I mean, last year in the Three Book Bloggers One Series Read Along, we did the Mercy Thompson series. At the time that we started that series, I was rereading eight books. And do you know, I enjoyed every moment of it. I was so excited to read something that was familiar and that I knew that I loved. And it really did kind of spur me to get excited about new things in that genre. So definitely, if you just would like to... I guess, go back to your comfort zone, find something that you really loved and reread it. My number two suggestion is to change up the format that you are reading on. For example, if you have been reading a lot of paperback books or hardcover books, it would be a great option to maybe pick up an e-reader or vice versa. If you've been reading the e-reader, pick up a physical book, hold the pages in your hand, look at the pretty cover art. You know, sometimes just a visual change will help. But my absolute favorite is sometimes just reading the book doesn't hit home. Uh, For whatever reason, you're just not in the author's head. You can't get in the character's point of view with whatever genre you're reading sometimes it's just hard to get there. And in those times, I recommend picking up an audiobook. I love audiobooks. And sometimes they are just amazing and they really take the book to another level. A skilled narrator will do wonders for a book that's a little bit dull. Let me tell you, don't sleep on audiobooks. They are a great addition to anyone's reading diet. So when changing your format, definitely give audiobooks a try. Tip number one is schedule a special time to read. And by that, I do not mean necessarily an hour a day, but I mean block out some hours on a weekend or evening, whatever you have free or even in the morning, you know, and by a couple hours, I mean like four to six hours, sit down with a book, grab yourself some coffee, some snacks, some tea, some vodka tonic, whatever you feel like doing. Put yourself in a little room, whether that's your bedroom or your library or, you know, your living room, you know, get comfortable, grab a book, probably one of the suggestions on this list from a book club or a recommendation or an old favorite and go to town. Turn off the phone, turn off the TV, turn off all distractions, play some light music in the background if you need some noise and just read. That's it. Sometimes it's really as simple as telling yourself you're going to do this and you do it. And a lot of times, especially if you pick a good book or you have a book that you enjoy greatly, this will knock you out of that slump. You'll want to pick up the next book in the the series or you'll want to pick up the next book by that author or you'll want to grab another recommendation from that friend. Not to mention with fall right around the corner, it's the perfect time of year to snuggle up with that blanket or sweater, grab your warm drink and settle in and read. Watch the fall leaves outside, you know, the wind's blowing. It's a perfect time to be inside. That is it for my top five ways to get over the reading slump. If you have used any of these tips, please let me know how they worked for you. And if you will try them, please either get at me on Instagram or Twitter and let me know which one you'll be trying. And I want to hear how it works out for you. And of course, feel free to share your own tips with me as well, because sometimes that reader slump hits me. And I would love to know even more ways that you kick yourself out of that slump. So thanks for listening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the tips and I will catch you guys next week. And until then, happy reading. Take care, everyone. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that love pop culture, from books and audiobooks to TV and movies. I'll see you next time here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast.